Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and I'm continuing my conversation with Lisa Good. We were talking about the topic of divorce, and uh, we've just been talking about when you first find out that news that uh, your spouse says, I don't love you anymore, or you get a note you know, saying that, and bottom line is you know you're going through a divorce. We've already spent a couple programs on that. Uh, yesterday we talked about the processes the stages of grief and divorce um, if you missed any of those first two programs or you know somebody that could be blessed by those only 14 minutes long go to our website hope is here dot today that's hope is here dot today and you can uh, listen to those um, we got through denial and anger yesterday we could have spent a program on each one of those by itself but uh, we want to keep on moving so we can at least touch on all those stages the next one is bargaining and uh you know in this stage you kind of start to um you know hold on to hope that maybe your marriage might be restored you start making bargains with god you know that you'll do better whatever it is that you think will help save your marriage um but you know you just don't want the uh, divorce to go through and you know, I know I've been guilty of even things like, uh, Lord, if I don't get a speeding ticket this time, I'll, I promise I'll never speed again, which is not true. But can you relate to that when you were going through your divorce, uh, Lisa? I sure can. You know, bargaining with him is not one of God's uh, plans for us. But you, you, you hope that you can ask him what went wrong and what you can do to change to make things better. I've just learned recently how opportunities have us uh, help us to grow closer to God, that every exit in our life has an opportunity for a new entrance and uh, a new uh, opportunity that we can embrace. You know, he, he puts us through these trials to purify us and uh, bring us out better on the other side. So when, you, when we decide to, to let him guide us into that new path that we're going on, we can understand that we don't have to bargain with him, that he, it's his plan and not ours. Yeah, and you know, God. You know, I want to say, you know, God doesn't want divorce; He really doesn't. But, you know, as uh, He's told in the Old Testament, He said, you know, I'm allowing divorce because your hearts got hardened, and so many things caused that. Um, you know, affairs, spending too much time in a job, addiction, um, unrealistic expectations. I mean, the list can go on and on on things that harden people's hearts. But we are wanting to help people if you've gone through one we're hoping by you hear some of these programs you're like man i need to work on my marriage because i don't want to go through divorce and you really don't yet uh, sometimes it's unavoidable especially when people are in addictions or there's verbal and physical abuse going on and you don't have any choice you have to and we want to remind you again god does not hate divorced people he just hates divorce because of what happens to us and we're talking about some of those stages you go through after you go through a divorce the grieving process and the fourth stage is pretty common and i'm a man and don't like to admit this but i'm going to be honest as always we'll be here on hope is here depression and I know I struggled some with depression. How about you, Lisa? I struggle a lot with depression, and de depression is very broad. It it is uh, combined. We we learned that in our, our divorce care group. We learned that it's to combine with the pain and the grief and the anger and the loneliness. Everything all together is is depression. Depression is just not one one thing that's wrong with us. It's all that in included. You know, I struggled with uh, weight loss. I lost uh, 20 pounds or so. I would go to the gym, and they they were wondering what was wrong with me. And then they, when I told them what was going on, they understood, you know, why I was like I was. And, you know, you, you tend to, you don't get any sleep. You uh, sit around, and, and just you're just walking like a zombie, and you don't know where you're going. And uh, your family just, they don't know what's wrong with you. They, you, you know, you're going through a difficult time, but you're not yourself. You're not, you're not who, who you are, who you were before. You're not that bubbly, fun person. You're just kind of in a, in a state of, of like you say, shock and pain and the depression is just all combined into one and you, you just, you can't get out of it. So if you're listening to this, you're thinking, wow, you know, me too, huh? You know, and I think that's one of the lies that Satan wants you to think two things one you're the only one going through it okay and that you know you nobody else struggles like this when they go through their divorce and so we're wanting to shed some light on the darkness of that lie and then the second thing is as a follower of jesus sometimes you think you know i, I shouldn't hurt like this if my faith was better and yes you do need to keep your faith in jesus and you do need to realize 
and I say this from the bottom of my heart, that this is not a life-ending situation. And there have been people that we've seen over the past year that uh, people that are very popular in the world's eyes that have taken their lives over the loss of a marriage. And yet, uh, we just want to remind you that if you'll keep your eyes on Jesus, if you'll reach out to others and say, I need help, that there is hope through divorce. But depression can be a part of it. That doesn't mean that you should you know, be there forever. But you need to realize sometimes you'll just be kind of numb in front of the TV. Because there is a sadness. It's the death of a major part of your life. And then kind of the weirdest thing I think about, at least, is uh, you might be doing well for the first part of the day, and then, bam, out of nowhere, you know, you just feel this overwhelming sadness and, like, kind of a depression. Did you experience that? Yeah, and it's like a uh, it's like a uh, gerbil track just keeps spinning in your head, you know, and you can't get it out of your mind. It's, it, it, the, the, it's like a movie that just keeps playing over and over, reruns in your brain, and, and you keep thinking, what if, what if, what if? But, you know, God can restore us and rehabilitate us, and it's, we shouldn't look at what's in front of us, but look at what God can do with us through this pain. You know, he's, he's put us through this for a reason, and he can restore us to health and heal our wounds, and accepting that and remembering that Christ, what Christ has done for us. We don't have to live where we are. God is all, has a provision for our life. Um, like in James 4, 1, his plans are better. Walk into a new season. His strength is my weakness, and God is my compass. And we use when we use him to show us where we're going, you know, in a vertical part of our life instead of horizontal, then we can get through our pain so much better. Amen. And, you know, it's okay to cry it out. And I want to encourage you to talk, talk, talk it out. You know, you can't do it for years, but for several months, you may have to. But don't wear out just one person, you know, your best friend. Uh, spread it amongst different friends and family members. Maybe you have a different person, you know, each day. I know I tried to learn that. Um, to do that and not be a burden on just one person. Um, best money you can invest in is counseling. It may mean brown bagging it for lunch, for work, and not being able to eat out or not being able to do Starbucks or uh, just, you know, you may have to make sacrifice, but I'm telling you that it's some of the best money you can spend if you do Christian counseling. But I would encourage you also that, you know, you may sometimes i know that i did uh for just a short season but i did i got on an antidepressant because it helped me get over the hump exercise also will help you sometimes you may need both um and yet uh you know god uses those things you don't want to use it forever as far as medicine but it may help you just to get through a season when life is just really really hard and you get hopeless so uh just realize depression is a part of divorce most of the time the other part of grief that uh, happens a stage with divorce, and sometimes it takes a while to get there, but is acceptance. It is. It's very hard to accept what um, what you didn't choose. It wasn't the path that you wanted, but the path that your your spouse had taken. Um, you were talking about you know not not to wear your friends and family out with it. It's hard not to talk about the pain because when you feel like when you talk about it, you're getting it out of your system. Well, I, I would wake up in the middle of the night and I, I wrote poetry. So all of my poetry was about what I experienced and you know, the pain, everything I went through. And um, after months and months of doing that, waking up at the same time every morning, it was just like I was doing that to, to release all my pain. Then one day I woke up and I stopped writing. So that was a way to express my, my pain and my depression through poetry. and then once you've gone through that and you've gone through all that hurt and you're healed then you can help other people heal mm. that part there was huge you can help other people i heard i believe it was rick warren say a long time ago uh, a pastor in california say god never wastes a hurt mm -hmm. and our scars can become someone else's stars but we have to choose to allow to do that right. and you know joyce meyer says you can become better or better but you can't be both and I know that Lisa has, and that's why we're doing this program. I want to choose to help you know that God loves you 
through divorce and that there is hope after that. Um, but you finally accept it, realize, uh, you know, hey, this is a new season, not one I expected. But I'm always so reminded of the four seasons, Lisa, that, you know, most of them are good to me. I mean, spring is beautiful, things new in life. Fall or summer, you know, the sun's shiny, it's bright, and, you know, God's a, a, a light, of course. And then the fall when the leaves change and the beauty of the color and the temperatures. Um, of course, then we get to winter, and I think divorce to me is a winter season of life mm -hmm. where it's just dark and cold and you just – you don't feel hope, but yet, man, spring's just right around the corner, isn't it? That's right. And you get to that point where you just can't get out of bed in the morning sometimes, you know, and and you just want to lay there and, and, and wake up and think it's a big dream and it's going to all be over. Um, I had those thoughts in my head, and, and, and we, we tend to rush, rush into making decisions without stopping to think about it during those times because you're just wanting to get past it, get through it and start off into something new and get, get, get over it, you know, like that. But it's, we got to listen to God and listen to his direction. And uh, he's the light in the dark that we need to follow. Amen. We talked a little bit earlier about a divorce recovery program that you've been a part of, and it's getting ready to come up again. Can you share a little bit about that? Because I'm sure there's people listening that would love to know information about this. Yes, it's called Divorce Recovery, and we start September 9th on uh, Sunday evenings at 5 o'clock from 5 to 7 over at Emanuel Baptist on Tate's Creek. And you know how we talk about that we're not alone, that it's good to be around other people who are experiencing the same pain and the people that who have been through it who can, can help them to see the light and see the hope that is there for their future. I've had w many women come into the class, and they'll look at me and say, Lisa, you're so well put together. How, how did you do it? I want to be like you. And I said, well, it wasn't this easy at the beginning. You know, I didn't, I, it wasn't like this, you know, overnight. It takes time. It takes patience, you know, fruits of the spirit, you know, with the uh, joy, kindness, patience, and self-control. All that has to, has to happen in your life. And, and just, you know, uh, it did, the divorce didn't happen overnight. It, it, so we are going to get over it. It's not going to happen overnight because, you know, it took years to get to that point. It's going to take years to get over that, you know, and. Um, just being with other people through our divorce care groups is a great way to uh, to support each other and be there for each other. So if people want to find out information about this uh, program, it starts on September 9th, is that correct? Yes. Uh, how do they do that? Um, they can contact me um, through um, Emmanuel Baptist, and they can um, call or Jeff Brown on uh, his email I can give you that at the end of the program okay well, we'll post that uh, later and let you know that but I want to encourage you to look at a divorce recovery program um, I didn't do it after my first divorce and um, I kind of wish I would have but I definitely did after my second and I really learned a lot about that and you know it's one of those things that you don't want to but i tell you it'll especially i love that they're doing theirs on sunday nights the one i went through uh, was on monday nights but it'll be a great way to start off your week once again um it'll be one of those things where you know that uh, you're not alone and uh, it'll help you realize that there's other people, uh, some in the exact stage you are, some further along, some that are in worse situations than you are right there. And so I really highly recommend uh, a divorce recovery group. Uh, they're going to do one at Emanuel Baptist starting on September 9th at 5 p.m. if you want to um, find out about that. Or they can email to get information. Yes, you can email jbrown80 at twc.com. All right, that's jbrown8080 at twc.com, or there's probably information on Emmanuel Baptist website, or you can contact me at Hope Is Here. We have a Facebook page, Hope Is Here. Uh, you can send me a message. I will get you contact information. But we're out of time for today, but I do want to encourage you to join us tomorrow as we talk about does God hate divorced people and is there life after divorce? It will be some of our next topics coming up, so I hope you'll join us as Lisa Good and I continue our conversation about hope after divorce on Hope Is Here. 
CMI is your full-service human resources provider in Central Kentucky. For 15 years, CMI Human Resources has taken great pride in helping organizations and people work. Whether it's employee handbooks or help in filling a position, no job is too large or too small for CMI. Contact the professionals today at CMI Human Resources, 859-296-2800 or online at cmiconsulting.com. 